Okay. Okay, I know. We're working. Greetings, friends. Well, one of the things that I could say about our life is it's never really dull and boring around here, especially as homesteaders. There's always something to do. <laughs> We're constantly doing new things and, and trying new stuff. And last year, one of the things that we added and tried that was new was our hand at raising bees. Our friend Adam at Farm Life Outfitters brought us our first bees here on the homestead, yep. and it was pretty exciting. It was super exciting. So we were raising those bees, but I noticed as winter started coming, they started to disappear, and I was like, oh no, I think we're losing our bees. Okay. So, well, for the past couple of weeks, we 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 think that we have lost our, our beehive, and, and uh, the bees that we had in there from Adam from Farm Life Outfitters, I think they, they moved on. So I was just like, man, I'm just kind of bummed out about it. So I just was out here working, working right back behind me in the high tunnel here and watering some of my tomatoes and cucumbers. And then I see like this tornado, it was coming like from somewhere like right in there, like this tornado <laughs> of bees coming and they were just like, whoosh. I was like, whoa, this is so cool. And they were coming down and they were just coming right to the beehive. I was like, whoa, and they just started circling around the beehive, and for some reason, earlier in the day, I'd asked Sayla, I was giving her some maple syrup, and I was like, just go ahead and take some maple syrup outside, and maybe we'll attract the bees or something, and they were coming down, getting some of the maple syrup, and then they were like checking out the beehive, and inspecting it, and this swarm was coming around, I was like, oh, I gotta get Lacey and Sayla to, and everybody to come out here and see this, this is pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> it was super cool, it really was. So we're there and we're just watching the bees just as their tornado, their swarm was just kind of tightening up, tightening up, and they're like checking out the beehive and they were just starting to fill it up. Wow. Not sure if you guys can see that, but there's bees everywhere. Looks like they're going in. Look how they're getting closer. They're going flock, flocking right on there. It's kind of crazy. I've never seen this happen before. It's really cool to watch. I know some of y'all wouldn't be sitting here this close. <laughs> I don't think Mike likes to be this close. <laughs> as long as you stay calm, that's the biggest thing. And make sure that, oh, I'm only worried about them getting trapped in my shirt or getting them accidentally stinging me. I'm getting better and better with being around them, but I just feel like I'm gonna freak out if one of them's on my neck and then accidentally get stung somehow, swatting at it or something. But uh, the more you're out here doing these kind of things, you gradually get more and more comfortable. It's definitely more intimidating with a bunch of them flying and swarming around. Especially when, it, as they first came in, it was like, whoa, it's like a tornado of bees. But uh, throughout the weeks, normally when they, the, we've had the bees here, there's just been a, a few of them out. It's really not bad at all. It's calming down more and more. More of them are going in. Well, it looks like they're getting settled in. Activity has really slowed down. It's really super interesting to watch. I had never seen that before. Do we need to see if they uh, stick around or not? So after those bees arrived, over the next few weeks, I was beginning to notice that it seemed like they were having a tough time staying in that nuke hive just because the nuke was too small for them. And they were just like bulging out. The bees were just like flowing out, especially when the temperatures really got warm. Yeah. So we were like, we really, really need to upgrade their hive. So we got a horizontal hive and we were just trying to make the process happen of, of of moving them into a bigger hive, yeah. but we didn't act fast enough. And then they started to swarm. We were just noticing as we were working outside that, hey, 
our bees are starting to go go again so we need to do something about this yeah it was really well kind of disheartening to see the swarm start because i was like oh no we were losing our bees but then we realized they had just split because there were so many of them and so all these bees started swarming up into this little ball package of bees way up in a persimmon tree that was right next to the hive we're like what are we going to do about this because we're, we're still new at keeping yeah. bees and not really good at trying to catch swarms you tried to do that once with your brother well, i was just a spectator there so this was our first time trying to do it ourselves, and we're trying to figure it out along the way so you're calling him up since he has experience raising bees and you're you're asking him what do we do yeah right now the main thing is to get them to stay yeah put some flames in there you don't have to put don't take anything out of the existing meat right now just make sure you put some flames in it and put those bees in that box so just go drop that whole whatever you collect them in it doesn't matter if you collect them in like a bucket and then just carry them over and dump them in the hive okay any, any, anything you can dump them into yeah so that you can so that you can get them into that box that's what you want because if they find that box acceptable and the queen is there you have a higher probability of and then I scrambled to go ahead and start cleaning up the area to prepare it to set our hive up, the new horizontal hive, so we could hopefully move these bees. So I weeded down the grass and the weed vegetation that was around and then put a tarp right under where the hive was going to be so that way you don't have any grass growing up along your, your beehive. Then we put block down and then we put the horizontal hive right on top of that. And then after that came the more dramatic part of this day. And the bees were about 15 feet in the air in this scrawny little persimmon tree that we had to lean ladders against that I was not quite sure about. Yeah, the tree wasn't that strong at all. Once we put the ladders on it, it was definitely wobbling. Yeah. And this tree was actually had a bunch of trees that were surrounding it before when I knocked and I culled out a lot of trees. So it just hasn't really developed a lot of branches yet for, for strength and stability. Yeah. And I was like, this is not one of the trees that I'd like to be working in. But here we are. Yeah, it actually is. It looks stronger on camera than it really is. Yeah. <laughs> But Plus one of our ladders, the top rung was broken and that adds a little bit more to the stability issues. So as we were looking around and we were like, we, we, we came up with a plan. Yeah. Alright, so I think we have a plan. <laughs> we're going to try this plan. We'll see what happens. I don't have a bee suit on either, by the way. <laughs> but she does. So we had a plan. Maybe it wasn't a good plan, but we had a plan. So I did take a little moment to pray about it, the situation, and, yeah. and just ask for help. But we took the rope. Actually, I handed the rope off to you, and you threw it over the branch like Batman or Batgirl. Yeah, <laughs> then I went on the other side of the tree and pulled the rope down so that way we could grab the branch with the rope. And then we went from there. Yeah, that's when it really got interesting. <laughs> Depends on the, me pulling in the right direction. All right, so this is another one of those things where you get pushed out of your comfort zone. You're doing new stuff you haven't done before, and uh, you're a little uncertain of yourself. And a little scared at the same time. Um. Like you ready? Thank you. All right. So I'm gonna Hard do. And fast. I'm gonna do a three. Two, one. So I was getting ready, had the rope, and then I pulled the rope in the branch, and then the bees came down. Right all over me. <laughs> and it didn't work out really well, and you were getting stung all over the place. I was. <laughs> so I'm like, as we were doing that, I'm like, uh oh, this did not go the way I want. You're running inside. Yep. He had to come and like take his hat, and right before I came inside, just so he was knocking bees off of me. And I came in, stripped down, and hopped in the shower, and was having taking a cold shower because I knew I was getting, I was getting stung a good many times. And after your shower, we had to come check on you. Yeah. <laughs> so how are you doing? 
I'm surviving. This one right here hurts the worst. Man, so it's stuck through the screen on the half. Yeah, that's, right where I, that's the first place I got hit right there. Oh, man. And then you got stuck all the places too. Oh, I have, so far I've counted 11, 16, 16 to 18, somewhere around oh, in there. <laughs> oh, man. And how many times did you get stung, you think? I think it was at probably at least 20. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it wasn't fun. Most of them were yeah. a little all over the place or you got stung? Mostly on my legs because I didn't put the bee suit pants on. I should have, but I didn't. Lesson learned. <laughs> I won't do that in the future. It'll be a full B suit. But I even got stuck right in the in the forehead. That was actually one that started hurting the worst initially. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So after you got stung, I tried to go back out there and see what I could do to encourage them to go into the hive. And they're right under this tote here. But I've noticed now they're attracted to the lemongrass that Lacey was using right down there. So I'm gonna see if I can grab some and put it closer to the entrance of a hive there because we want them coming out of right over there. All right, so we're just gonna pick off one of these, put some lemongrass on here. Hopefully they'll be attracted to this over here. Right there, we'll just set it right there. Uh, it just wasn't working. So Hazen came out, her, your brother, yeah. and then he, he decided that he, we're gonna work together. We set the ladder up differently. And he just climbed right up there, cut the branch off. Maybe I thought it was. And just gradually just brought the, the branch down the ladder and put the, the branch with the bees in the hive. And then we he secured it up and hoping that they would stay uh, and we did what we could and It was pretty interesting as he was doing that and we we're all just kind of really cautious about the bees The ducks just walk right along like there's nothing. There's no problem not scared of the bees that are just like, what Are these crazy humans doing? Yeah. <laughs> I see more going in than coming out That's good <laughs> Is that dramatic enough? <laughs> it's not the perfect setup. We're gonna leave them in there, Mike. Okay. And we're gonna have to, we'll give them a week or so. They've got some frames in there. Okay. We'll give them a week or so, and uh, then we'll open it up and see what they're doing. Okay. Put a few more frames in. See, they're settling down and going in there. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. there. You can tell how many, how many more. I mean, they're all trying to get in there. That's good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> That's one of the ways you can tell whether you've, whether you've made a successful capture or not is if you get the queen and, and the majority of the bees, they'll, I mean, there was bees everywhere around here and now they're just kind of like, like one of those sci-fi movies where something goes into the hole, <laughs> consolidates and goes in there. Genie back in the bottle or there whatnot. <laughs> so the bees were looking good. We left them alone for a few days right in the horizontal hive, but a couple days later they did swarm away regretfully. But the other bees, since they had split, stayed in the nuke. So they're looking good. They're still there, happy about that, but we still need to find some bees to occupy our horizontal hive or move the ones from the nuke into the horizontal yeah. one. But uh, we're hoping to expand our bee operation despite this little failure setback of stings. I'm sorry you had to go through that, but thank you for trying to help out. And Yeah, uh, it wasn't fun. All right, they, they didn't, they, they're just now going away, and this is like a month and a half ago that it happened. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So we'll just have to try again. Like I said, it is never dull and boring around here, but no. that's part of life, it's part of learning, it's part of growing, and it's trying to expand and, and to make the most of life. So we learn from it. We would do the situation if we had to do it again a little bit differently. So, uh, but yes, and I will do it differently next time. So, you know, I don't need a whole bunch of comments telling me what I did wrong because I already know it. <laughs> We're sharing with you the way we did it that you don't do it this way. So I would, I would have probably done it differently. I would have climbed up the ladder, cut the branch and did like Hazen did instead of trying to shake them off in, in, uh, into the toad and onto you and 
you probably would have wore the pants too in, yeah. for the V suit. Yeah. So there's a number of little lessons here. You live and you learn. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. But I'm sure you guys had some experiences like this where it, things just didn't go quite the way you thought it was gonna turn out. Uh, feel free to let us know in the comment section below if you wanna share some of those experiences. We would love to hear them from you. Well, we're gonna buzz off and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>